the Sherlock Holmes International Exhibit, there are hundreds of fascinating artifacts that tell the history of Sherlock Holmes. While some of these artifacts come from the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle estate, many come from the University of Minnesota, which houses the largest collection of Sherlock Holmes items in the world. To learn more about how the University of Minnesota became home to the Sherlock Holmes collections and why it is so important, I am here at the Anderson Library at the University of Minnesota to speak with Tim Johnson, the curator of the Sherlock Holmes collections. When did you become interested in Sherlock? And what got you interested? For me, it was much later, 1984, when PBS ran the PBS mystery series with Jeremy Brett as Sherlock Holmes. That one got me hooked because that was a more complex, in some ways darker, angular Holmes that I really appreciated. So that's where I really got pulled in. How many Sherlockian artifacts do you have in the collections here? Depends on how you define an artifact, but I would say, you know, at least 60,000 um, pieces in the collection. Uh, everything from books and periodicals like you would think to some of the odder items like beer glasses and restaurant menus and bricks and cement footprints. <laughs> <laughs> It seems as though this is really a special place for Sherlock artifacts and memorabilia to show up. So what is it about the University of Minnesota Anderson Library that makes it a place that people want to donate their items to? You know, it all goes back in some ways to five faculty uh, members who had lunch together here in 1947 and discovered they had a shared interest in Sherlock Holmes. And it was like, all right, what are we going to do with that? And one of the things they did with that is went out a few decades later and bought a small collection of first editions uh, because they loved the stories. And, and then after that, everything kind of flowed. Um, the partnership the universities had with the Norwegian explorers kind of fueled the growth of the collection. Um, when the Hench collection came in 1978 as a donation, it was like the Sherlockian world sat up and took notice and was like, what's going on in Minneapolis? We got to find out. And that became kind of this, that gravitational pull that eventually brought in the Shaw collection and the Miser collection and other collections that made us the world's largest. And who would have thought? I mean, it's one of those happy historical accidents in a way, because you don't equate Minneapolis and Sherlock Holmes. It's London and Sherlock Holmes. So when it comes to the collections here at the University of Minnesota, how do you decide which items should be received in basically added to the collection. Things that might fill the gap or kind of help us with our overall mission of documenting Sherlock Holmes in popular culture. Who is this person? Why is he so popular? How does he get expressed by different parts of the fandom, uh, young and old? What about the future of the collection? Do you think that it's going to look different in the future? How would you like to see it maybe change or maybe expand in some sort of way? I hope it looks different. Um, <laughs> Um, one of the pitfalls of early Sherlockian collecting is it's in, in some ways, in, in many ways, it's white and it's male. And I want to see diversity in the collection. I want to hear other voices expressed in the collection. I want to hear black voices and brown voices and indigenous voices, um, LGBTQ plus voices. Um, all of those, I think, add to the richness of the collection. Um, we've made some beginning inroads in, in those ways, but the, diver the diversity of the collection, I think, is the future of the collection, and it's the joy of the collection is, is in those directions. I think it's because Sherlock has become such an icon in popular culture. You see a magnifying glass, you think of Sherlock Holmes. You see a deerstalker hat, you think of Sherlock Holmes. You see a pipe, and you, especially a curved pipe, and you think of Sherlock Holmes. And so what is it about this, this person, this character who has become such an icon in popular culture? That's why it's important to collect him because he's so embedded in the culture, but Sherlock plays good in any media to any audience. Um, yeah, he's a Victorian guy, um, but, 
there's all kinds of other appeal and you want to collect that you want to understand that um, that's the excitement that's why we do what we do is because Sherlock Holmes is Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes's appeal is evident in the 60,000 items that make up the Sherlock Holmes collections. Each item holds a multitude of stories that are waiting to be discovered by visitors. In this video series, we have taken a look at the surprising connections between Sherlock Holmes and Minnesota, from Mayor Eustace in the late 19th century to modern day Norwegian explorers. Minnesotans have been drawn to Sherlock Holmes and his method of deductive reasoning. Sherlock Holmes has inspired Minnesotans to become history makers, who use the historical inquiry process to collect Sherlock artifacts, research the history of Sherlock Holmes, and publish numerous works. Before you go, MNHS wants to hear from you. Take the survey linked in the description to let us know how we did. Your feedback helps us to improve and learn more about what you want to see.